hey guys oh, welcome to my channel I hope you all are doing well so as promised I'm back with this semi homemade Indian dinner party menu now all the recipes which I'm about to share with you guys those are all classic recipes and when I say semi homemade that means we're gonna get some help from the store because when we host the party yes we do want to serve delicious food to our guests but that doesn't mean that we get stuck in the kitchen all day long so we're gonna get some help from the store but then we're gonna give our twist to it and we'll make it semi homemade so the recipes which i'm sharing in this video those particular recipes i have made it before from scratch so if you prefer to make it that way i will link those videos down below in the description box as well as i have made before uh dinner party menu as well as the anniversary party menu so all the related video i will link it down below in the description box okay so let's start first with the appetizer now samosa is a staple appetizer for our party but in order to make the perfect samosa we need to make sure the dough is perfect also we need to fry it on certain temperature so to make it all easy we'll be using tortillas now I'm using the mission brand one. You can use any brand that you like and I'm using the medium size one. There is a smaller than this one also. So if you're looking for the smaller size samosa, you can use that one. But guys, this will make your life so easy. Try this recipe. I'm sure you guys will thank me later. Only thing with this is let's say if you're planning to keep this samosa for long, then chances are it will get soggy. So you wanna make it and serve it right away and wait until how i serve this samosa now if you want to see the samosa recipe from scratch i do have that one also so again that will be linked down below in the description box so let's go in the kitchen and let's make samosa here i did some pre-preparation to make things faster so here i have boiled potato these are medium size four boiled potatoes which we're gonna use it for the samosa. Also do you have the peas, these are the frozen one, and here I have the onion as well as the tomato. Now both of them, you can finely chop it and use it that way, but since we need to cook that properly, it's easy to just blend it in the blender so that way the cooking time will be less. So got the onion, tomato, here I have the ginger garlic paste, also I soak some uh, cashew in a hot water which we're gonna use it for the gravy and this is the samosa masala that we're gonna use it also do have the green chilies my spice box is ready to go as well as the salt so all the things are ready to go so first of all we'll go ahead and make the masala for samosa so here i have about tablespoon coriander seeds into that i'm adding some red chilies and you can grind this into grinder also now the masala is ready, we'll go ahead and make the stuffing. So I have about a tablespoon oil. Into that I'm adding some cumin seed, pinch of hing, as well as the green chilies. Now green chilies, it's up to you how spicy you want it. I'm adding about a half a tablespoon in here. Since we're going to add the red chilies in there, if you don't like too spicy, you can go lighter with the green chilies. Let that saute just for a few seconds or so. And now I'm going to add about a tablespoon samosa masala. Now this samosa masala, you can use it for sabji also because with that masala, sabji tastes really good too. So here I'm adding about a four medium sized boiled potato. Go ahead and mix everything properly. And I'm gonna add about half a cup green peas. Now these are the frozen ones. So you wanna defrost that before you add into that. You can just add salt to taste as well as I'm adding some garam masala and the amchur powder and that's about it guys. This stuffing is so easy to make and there is not that many ingredients but still it tastes really good. Now as I mentioned earlier I do have the proper recipe for the samosa so if you are interested how to make the outer layer for the samosa from the scratch I'm gonna link that video down below in the description box. Once you mix everything properly, you can go ahead and add the coriander leaves and let that cool down completely before you start stuffing into. So you want to make sure that tortilla is fresh and here I took some all-purpose flour, add water in it, make thick paste out of it. So basically that will work as a glue. So first I'm going to go ahead and cut the tortilla into half and by using that all-purpose flour paste, we'll secure all the edges just to make sure 
that it doesn't open up when we fry it. And as you see, guys, this samosa is so easy to make because traditional samosa, as you guys know, the outer layer is everything. It, the dough has to be perfect consistency. The temperature has to be perfect in order to get the crunchy outer layer. But by using the tortilla, you will achieve all that. Only thing, like I mentioned before, you do want to use it within a few hours because if you keep it and eat it next day, chances are it will get soggy. But uh, definitely, guys, give this recipe a try. This is the easiest way to make the samosa. Mm -hmm. So you can deep fry the samosa on medium flame. Once it gets lightly brown on one side, you can go ahead and flip it on the other side. Just make sure that the temperature is on medium and not too high, otherwise it will get brown very quickly. And as you can see, it did not soak any extra oil in there, but it was a perfect crunchy samosa. To go with samosa, we'll be making sweet chutney. Now, traditionally, sweet chutney is made out of dates as well as the tamarind, but here we are making semi homemade, so we'll be using apple sauce. I'm using the unsweetened apple sauce, and again, it will not take that long to make it, so let's go ahead and make the sweet chutney. So here I have six ounce unsweetened apple sauce. Now, instead of unsweetened, you can use the sweet apple sauce. If you use that one, then you do wanna adjust the sugar quantity. Next, adding some tamarind pulp. Go ahead and mix everything properly. And now I'm gonna add some black salt, coriander cumin powder, red chili powder, and sugar. Since I'm using the unsweetened apple sauce, I'm adding about a tablespoon sugar in there. But if you use the sweet apple sauce, you might not even need to add any sugar in it. And that's about it, guys. It cannot get easier than this because traditional tamarind chutney, you guys know, it takes forever because you have to pressure cook the dates and the next process is also kind of time consuming. But definitely give this recipe a try. As you see, it takes hardly a minute to make. And you can add some water to adjust the consistency. And now for the main course, I will be making classic paneer butter masala as well as the dal makhni. So dal makhni, as you guys know, it takes forever to cook and the more you let it simmer, it tastes really good. So to cut down all that time, we'll be using this store-bought madras lentils. Now I bought this from Costco and of course we are not gonna serve it just like that. We'll add all our spices, will make it to our taste and then even your guest cannot make it out that it is the store bought. So let's go in the kitchen and let's make the dal makhni. So 
So here in the pan, do have some ghee. Into that, I'm adding some cumin seeds as well as I'm gonna add onion, tomato, and ginger garlic. All those things will just go ahead and add it at once and we'll let that cook until oil is not separated. So it will take, I would say, about five minutes or so, and then we'll go ahead and add all the dry spices. So first here, I'm adding some haldi powder as well as the red chili powder and dhania jeera powder. Once you add all those things, as you can see, the things are really dry. So at this point, you want to make sure the temperature is on low. And now I'm going to add this madras lentil in there. So make sure at this point temperature is on low because now I'm going to go ahead and add one cup half and half. Half and half is half cream and half milk. Now if you can find heavy cream, you do want to add that because with the heavy cream, dal makhani will be very creamy. But since I didn't find that, I'm using half and half. And again, I cannot stretch this enough, but make sure the temperature is on low. Otherwise, as soon as you add the milk in there, it will cuddle. And of course, dal makhani has to be very creamy, so we'll go ahead and add one tablespoon butter in there. Let that simmer on low flame for about uh, 10 minutes or so. And last, you can go ahead and add some garam masala as well as the kasuri methi. Mix everything very well and you can garnish that with some cream on top as well as kasuri methi. And as you can see, this dal makhani, it's so creamy. It hardly took us about 15-20 minutes to make it. and there you go, our dal makhani is all done. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make paneer butter masala, which is everyone's favorite. And it's all about that creamy gravy. Now, in order to make the restaurant style paneer butter masala, we'll be using tomato bisque soup. Now, make sure you use the tomato bisque soup and not the regular tomato soup, because that will be more sour and it will not give you that creamy consistency. And of course, I'm not just going to dump this and call it a paneer butter masala. We'll be adding all our other spices. And believe me, this will save you so much time in the kitchen. Now, in the past, I have made veggie makkhan wala using this mushroom soup. Now, even if you are not a big fan of mushroom, no worries because it will not give you any mushroom flavor. But it will add all that creaminess that veggie makkhan wala should have. So that recipe, I will link it down below in the description box. So now let's go in the kitchen. Let's make paneer butter masala. So here I had 12 ounces of paneer and this is totally optional, but I cut it into bigger pieces and we're going to make it lightly crunchy as well as the flavorful. So here in a pan, do have some ghee. Next, I'm going to sprinkle some salt as well as the kitchen king masala. Now, as I mentioned, this is totally optional, but when we bite into the paneer, it should have some flavor. So for that reason, I'm adding those two ingredients in there. And anytime you want to make the paneer crunchy, always cut it into bigger pieces like this instead of cutting them small, uh, because that way the process will be very quick. And then once it's crunchy, then you can just go ahead and, and uh, cut it into small pieces. So as you can see, hardly it takes a few seconds. Once it gets crunchy on one side, you can flip it on the other side. And now we'll go ahead and make the gravy. So here in a pan, you have some ghee. Into that, I'm adding chopped onion. Now we need to let the onion cook until it's translucent. So if it, it will take about, I would say, minute to two minutes. And next, I'm going to go ahead and add some uh, ginger and garlic paste. You want to let that cook for a few seconds or so and then go ahead and add the tomatoes. Now once you add the tomato, you want to let that cook for next 5 to 7 minutes or until ghee is not separated. And it's really important to make sure that the tomato get cooked properly. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the cashew paste, which I soak it in the hot water. And once you add that again at this point also, you want to make sure the temperature is on low. Go ahead and mix everything properly and now I'm going to go ahead and add the haldi powder, cumin coriander powder as well as the red chili powder. You want to go ahead and mix everything properly and again make sure the temperature is on low otherwise the chances are that all the spices can get burned. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the tomato bisque soup that we have. 
So tomato soup basically will give all the creaminess that the paneer butter masala should have it without much efforts. And here I'm adding one cup, half and half. As I mentioned, if you have the heavy cream, go for that one. Go ahead and mix everything properly and make sure the temperature is on low. And as you can see, the gravy is so thick and creamy at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and add some garam masala as well as the kasuri methi. Add the paneer in there and that's about it, guys. Our paneer butter masala is all done. So now we'll go ahead and make the dessert. So for dessert today, I'm making mango mousse. This is the easiest dessert to make. And the reason I chose this is because mango is in season right now. And of course, everyone loves mango. So in order to make the mousse, you can make your homemade whipped cream. But here we'll be using store-bought whipped cream. Again, this is so easy to make. So let's go ahead and make dessert now. So here I'm taking one cup whipped cream. Into that I'm adding one cup mango pulp. Now you can use any brand that you like. I'm using Deep and this is Quesar mango pulp. Guys, if you haven't tried this mango pulp, I would highly suggest, especially with the puri, it tastes really good. Now when you mix both of these ingredients, you want to be very gentle and not mix it how we usually mix two ingredients because whipped cream is very fluffy and this technique called folding so you have to be very gentle with it otherwise it will not have that mousse consistency now our mango mousse is ready so we'll go ahead and serve it here in a serving bowl first i'm gonna add some uh, fresh mango then top that with the mango mousse that we made it also i'm gonna drizzle some uh, mango pulp and add some fresh mango on top and that's it guys our mango mousse is ready it is that simple you can add some dry fruits or nuts in it but i just kept it very simple so again definitely give this recipe a try and now to serve this samosa i'm using this board so first i'm gonna put the chutney samosa as well as you can use any namkin that you like I do have this dry kachori, so I'm going to go ahead and add that also here. And that's about it, guys. Our semi-homemade appetizer is all ready. Next time, when you guys have a get-together, definitely give this recipe a try because it will save you so much time in the kitchen. So here, our dinner is ready. I also have some pickle, onion, as well as a popper and... Uh, this naan is also store bought so that's it guys our dinner is all done guys our dinner is ready all this recipe came out so perfect and since we use all this shortcut it didn't take that long to make it and that was our purpose right when we have a guest over we want to spend time with them and not in the kitchen so definitely give those recipe a try and if you like this kind of recipe if you haven't subscribed my channel so far please do so be a part of my youtube family i would love to have you guys here Again, thank you so much for watching guys. Take care and I will see you soon in my next video.